So I basically already started this project, but then I thought, hey, I should blog this. I'm not used to this. So this is my Coleman, I think it is an H220, let me confirm it for you. Yep, there it is, model, I hope this can show it. It's a 220H, so yeah, model 220H from Coleman Lantern. I believe it to be a kerosene model, at least I've been putting kerosene in it, and it has had no problem. But then I thought, you know, kerosene is basically just really refined or distilled, uh, however that process goes. Diesel, so I put diesel in the tank, and yeah. I won't do that again. So, this is a short video, hopefully, of me trying to disassemble the thing and put it back together. And clean it all up and see if I can restore it. Alright, so here I am. I have removed the top portion of the unit. Um, I don't, I'm not a professional around uh, doing these things, so I don't know the name of the parts. I'm just trying to fix it. So as simple as that, pull that off. There was just, just one little retaining nut holding it down. And of course, this thing was removed before I even started recording. So take that out and I'll clean that up with diesel or a kerosene rather and uh, then you got simple parts here so just gotta figure out what to clean what I can clean and go from there so I took the gas tubes off and they ended up being really clean this is I found out was called the mixer unit this is what mixes the air to fuel ratio and gets it at its optimal burning rate but the fuel tubes, fuel tubes were actually clean so I went ahead and put that one back on, I'm about to put that one back on, and I cannot get the fresh air intake tube off, which I also found out is what that purpose is, based on the fact that it comes out here and goes down to nothing. So I'm assuming that's obviously cold air intake. And I can't get it off, but it doesn't really matter because nothing but cold air is going to go up through there, and from what I can tell, there's no bee's nest or anything up there, although I will take a flashlight to it just to make sure but there's nothing up in there so I'm gonna call it good blow it out with compressed air if I have to which means my mouth because it just got rid of my air compressor so blow it out as best I can but I'm assuming it's gonna be good from there and uh, so that's where I'm at right now and now I'm about to work on that portion well as I understand this part here along with this portion here the skinnier part goes into the bigger part it's called the generator and uh, if you know about these things, you know it's not supposed to look like that. So, I was trying to heat it up with the blowtorch, basically, and, and clean it up. And it was going great. In fact, it got it really hot, red hot, and it would clear it off all the oil crap that was on it. But then I let it go a little bit too much and basically warped it. So, now I'm looking for a new one. Okay, sit rip. So... I have broken the generator as I have said, so I'm going to possibly order a new one of those. I took out the pump assembly, that was quite simple, I didn't get it on camera, darn it. Uh, sorry about that, but um, I actually used leather to seal it, which was really interesting to see, at least I think it's leather. Uh, but my father had, we gotten in a conversation with my dad and he says that they use leather as seals, so I didn't believe him, now I do. So yeah, they use leather to seal. Uh, at least I think it's leather, like I said. So I've done that, gotten that all the pot, and sprayed some penetrating lube. I'm probably not doing this by the book. I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking lube everything, get everything oiled. I oiled the, excuse, there it is, there it is, the pump. I oiled the pump up and that works so much better. It actually pumps. Um, so that's working great. And it uh, pumps the fuel right through there. And I'm not going to give up on running pure, you know, diesel through this because it might actually work. So I'm going to try it one more time for a while and see if it works. It's cheap. And you can get it at any gas station almost. So, um, but let's just reassemble now. And I'll wait for the uh, new generator to come. Put that in real quickly. And we'll be good to go. Okay, so I finished taking it apart and I got it all back together. Um... Basically, the dealio is I need to order a new um, generator for it. I cleaned off the, uh, I think they call it the butterfly valve, 
no, it's not a butter cooker. It's a well, it's the valve to adjust the amount of gas flow. And I still kept the diesel in the tank because I'm, I'm going to dump it out later. But right now, I'm um, just for keeping it in there until I order the generator. I'll do that. So, anyways, I'm basically want to share that I'm fascinated with these lanterns. This thing was so much fun to take apart and put back together. And they're such a simple design that when we're camping, this is the whole idea of keeping this old-fashioned lantern, is it's reliable. It, it doesn't run on batteries. Obviously, you know, the LED lanterns are really nice, really convenient. They're cheap, and some of them are rechargeable, of course. But sometimes old technology is just better. And one of the benefits of running this thing is it doesn't use much fuel. I tested this one night and ran this for four hours and only ended up using about a half a tank on diesel. And that was with the generator being really dirty and gummed up, so it wasn't even running at its full efficiency. Or rather, it wasn't even running at all the, the capacity that the, thing, the burning rate, I mean. So, these things are awesome. I'm, I'm just totally going to keep this. We're totally going to be using this as a light source and even a heat source because this thing gives off some radiant heat. And uh, so I figured I could like heat the bathroom up before we take a shower or whatever and get the bathroom really nice and toasty warm or whatever. So, just theories, just ideas. Um, it does make me a bit different, uh, excuse me, it does make me a bit nervous because it is, you know, flammable fuel. But, you know, I know the insides of it now and I understand its operation. And that gives me a little bit more faith in that I can rely and trust even um, Bunny alone with it, running it. And so, that gives me a little more faith and assurance, and I'll go over with it with her, the operation. So, thanks for checking the short video out. I will actually add the um, portion of when I finally do get the generator to this video right here. So, I'm not going to say goodbye yet, but it will be sometime between now and the next part of this video. So, let's go to the next part, into the future. Well, I think where I left off with this video was that I broke the generator that was in it and I could have successfully cleaned it in fact it was in good healthy shape it was just very dirty but I went ahead and ordered a new one got it installed ran it on Caro put it all back together basically that's all that happened all the you know this really isn't a video about step-by-step -step procedures it's just about my experience experiment with this 220 model lantern and I gotta say that we are both impressed. I'm more impressed. I'm geeking out. This thing puts off, and I did find out online that it actually just naturally does this, and it's kind of meant to do that. Um, not necessarily meant to, but people buy these lanterns for the purpose of generating light. However, uh, compared to lumens to heat, this thing puts off 98% more heat than it does light and I'm talking about like lumens to heat ratio so this thing after some research is supposed to be putting anywhere from three to five thousand BTUs give or take because uh, it kind of depends on the fuel and the particular mantles you have on there and how much pressure is going to take so forth a lot of it are variables but it can produce up to five thousand BTUs of heat and it does this thing gives off a ton of heat. In fact, I'm using that lantern alone to heat this entire shop today. Just that lantern, and it is keeping it at a consistent 74 degrees. It is 52 degrees outside, and this thing has kept it at about 74. Um, I think that little arrow means it might be going down. But for the past two hours, it's been fluctuating between 76 and 72 so it's staying right in that range uh, for being 52 degrees outside this is a 300 square foot, 320 square foot shop I'm mightily impressed that a little 5000 BTU heater like that Coleman model 220H exactly can can keep this place that warm so got a towel in front of the door because that door leaks like a sieve there's still a lot of leaks coming through the door but got my uh, little buddy heater which I haven't even turned on 
because this thing is producing heat. It is awesome. So anyways, yes, it's back together. It's working. I ran it on pure Caro the other night. It ran so well on Caro, it got very bright, very clean burn. Um, just really impressed with its performance. Ran it all night on a whole tank. I mean, it. when I got up in the morning, it, ran, it ended up running out of pressure, but it did not run out of fuel. So I just topped it off with fuel, pumped it up again. It was working really well. And decided, you know, I really don't want to pay upwards of $10 a gallon for Coleman fuel or for Caro. So what I decided was, I wonder if it would mix pretty well with diesel. So right now I'm actually running a 2 to 1 ratio of diesel. So I've got two parts diesel, one part Caro. Um, and it's, it's running absolutely great on that ratio. Now it's actually running a little bit low on either pressure or fuel or something right now. I'm not sure, but I need to turn the knob up more. So it's a little bit more tricky to get it run really well on a on diesel mixture, but it does work. And so if you play with it a little bit, experiment with it a little bit, honestly I think in the end, uh, right now I'm running a 2 to 1, I'm probably just going to run a 1 to 1, 50-50 mixture. Because I think it, it, it just, the amount of priming that I had to do, preheating that I had to do to get this thing running on diesel was just ridiculous. And I understand that it is going to clog it up. There's going to be a lot of soot. And there is. The top of that thing is filthy now because it smoked like crazy. There were great balls of fire coming out of it at first. But eventually I'm going to move to a 50-50 mixture. But that's still going to save, you know, 25%. Um... It'll save, it'll save a lot of money, so. And uh, the thing runs up to 12 hours from my research. I was finding out that a 220 um, has a 28-ounce tank. And 28 ounces of fuel, 128 ounces per gallon. I'm trying to do the math on camera. I think that works out to be about 4.5. Yeah, so I should be able to fill that thing four and a half times with fuel under one gallon should last four and a half Phillips and it runs for 12 hours on a full tank so running it for only a few you know probably about um, maybe you know it depends on the temperature outside but I'm using this thing as a heater so running it uh, maybe three hours at night getting up at about 6 a.m. start it then get up you know, all together at 9 a.m. Uh, theoretically, that I, I mean, I could heat my whole house with this thing. I don't, I don't know. So, I'm just going through thoughts in my mind um, how to heat this place and possibly using that alone to heat the place. And it looks like that actually might work, and it might be a little bit more cost efficient to do it with just that than it would be to be running my little buddy heater or big buddy heater rather, and that other big uh, turbo powered heater, diesel heater that I have. So. Uh, that I'm borrowing from a friend. Okay, so the camera's probably picking up a little bit of wind, so I'm sorry about that. I hope you can hear me okay. So running a 2 to 1 mixture of diesel and caro did not actually end up working too well. Um, that glass is black, so there's too much dirt. There's too much sun. This is, this is just after like one, you know, maybe three hours of running it. So it's just absolutely disgustingly filthy. Not going to work, so... Honestly, it, it would work as a heater. This thing would just get very dirty after about a week and I'd have to clean it. Um, probably not the internal parts because the internal parts are actually functioning okay with the diesel. But this thing in general, all the, I mean, this is just covered out top. But this thing is just covered in black soup. So I've now got approximately a half to half mixture of diesel with Carol. In fact, I haven't really mixed it up a little bit. But, you know, just giving it. A little stir. Uh, we're gonna see how difficult this thing is getting started with the mixture. But I just wanted to document this to show you the idea. Now I've already pumped this. I've already filled it. I've got half and half in there approximately. But I'm gonna pump it just a little bit more just to make sure. But it is it is very firm. So turn my cleaning lever up a few times. Put it down. I'm not turning the knob now. So. 
very difficult to get going. A lot of fire, a lot of flame. Opening full throttle basically right now, which is probably not a good idea. Yeah, not a good idea. We'll go back to quarter. Ton of smoke, ton of fire. Difficult to get going. But once it goes, it goes. So I got it going. Full throttle, full open. Oh, spitting a little. But I think it's going now. Yep, it's going, so I'll just let it heat up. Wait for all the smoke to go away, which is pretty much gone. There you go. So, pretty neat. Running a half tap to make sure it does work. But I'll say this that with the diesel, I actually don't think it's getting quite as quite as hot and quite as bright. But the brightness might just be because of all the dirt and soot. And I'm clearly going to have to clean this thing real well. But it does work. So you can run diesel. In fact, you could run straight up diesel basically. I had uh, three quarters diesel in it a little bit ago, and it ran. Um, but not very well. So, but it is running. There you go. Sweet. So, anyways, there it is after being rebuilt. Now I basically have to clean it all up again. Probably going to take the generator apart and burn it a little bit without wrecking it. Burn it up a little bit to clean it up. Soak it in some alcohol, whatever, carb cleaner. I um, want to spray out the mechanisms down here a little bit, like the inside of the pump, get that sprayed out, blown out with compressed air, whatnot. But other than that, this thing is functioning, it is working, and I could rely on this camping or RVing if we wanted to. So it's been pretty exciting. Got it open full throttle right now. It's certainly getting hot, it's certainly bright, but Minus the suit, or suit, suit, whatever you call it, and a uh, lot of heat. Pretty awesome. So, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, one more step toward RV light. Pretty happy about that. See you later. Seriously?